Hi, in this video we're going to talk about factoring polynomials and factoring uh, by GCF and grouping. So first let's talk about what it means to factor. So when we multiply two things together, either two whole numbers or two polynomials, um, after, we get, after we do the multiplication we get something called a product. Uh, so in this case, case, 8 times 7 is 56, and when we multiply the monomial 2x times x plus 3, we have a product of 2x squared plus 6x. But the things that we multiplied together are called the factors. Uh, so when we're factoring, we're just reversing the process of multiplication. So we're going to be given a product, and we're going to go backwards and rewrite it as a, a product of two polynomials. Um, but the way that we factor is going to depend on the kind of polynomial we're beginning with. In this class, we're going to talk about the following methods of factoring. Uh, so in this video, we're focusing on greatest common factor and factoring by grouping, and the other methods will be covered in other videos. Uh, so let's talk about a greatest common factor first. Uh, so when we talk about greatest common factor of two whole numbers, um, we can think about the prime factorization of those numbers. So in this example, we have 36 and 48, and writing the prime factorization for each, uh, we can use those prime factors to build the GCF, or the greatest common factor. Uh, so 36 is equivalent to 2 squared plus 3 squared, and 48 is the same as 2 to the fourth times 3. Now, when we're looking for greatest common factor, we want the, the most number of factors that are in common between each of the factorizations. Uh, so it has to be in common to be part of the GCF. So we have a pair of twos in common, two pairs of twos, and we have a pair of threes in common in each of the factorizations. So our GCF has two squared times three. Uh, there are some other factors, but those factors didn't have a partner to match up with in the other numbers factorization. Um, what you might notice here is that if we were to think about our factorization using exponential form, we have 2 squared in the factorization for 36 and 2 to the fourth in the factorization for 48. We actually take the smaller of those two exponential expressions, 2 to the second, as part of the GCF. For the threes, uh, the 36 had a 3 squared, but the 48 only had a 3 to the first. And in the GCF, we have a 3 to the first. So that's the same way we're going to build our uh, greatest common factor when we're talking about polynomials. If you have numbers, you might be able to find the GCF by just kind of thinking about the highest number that divides 36 and 48, and you might have been able to come up with 12 without actually having to do this prime factorization. But it's looking for the smaller of the exponents when we're looking at variables. All right, so let's practice finding the GCF of variable expressions. Uh, so in the first example, we have these three monomials. And we're going to uh, think about the GCF by taking the smallest exponent that is in common for all of the different uh, parts of that term. And we'll do the same thing for the second example as well. All right, so here's our uh, first example, just rewritten here. Uh, so we're looking at uh, finding what's in common in each of these three terms. And we do see that there are A's in common in each of the terms. Uh, so for our GCF, we're going to take the smaller exponent, which is a squared. There are b's in common in all three terms. Um, we're going to take the smaller exponent, which is b to the first. So the GCF for those three terms would be a squared b. For the second example, we'll look at the GCF of the coefficients, 6, 18, and negative 22. Um, right now we're taking positive GCF, but in the, some examples we might want to take um, negatives as well. In this case, the greatest common factor for the numbers is 2. For the m's, we do have an m in common for all three terms, and the smaller exponent on m is uh, 2, so we have m squared. And we also have n's in common in all three terms, so we take the smaller exponent on the n's, which is n squared. All right, so now we're going to use this idea to find the GCF of a polynomial. So when we're finding the GCF and factoring by GCF, we want to not only find the GCF, but write the polynomial as a product. So we have to then divide mentally um, the original polynomial by that GCF, and then make sure we write a product of the GCF times the quotient. 
Uh, so we're going to look at uh, these examples here, these five examples. Go ahead. Here we are. All right. So for the first one, we're finding the GCF of each of the two terms. Uh, we don't have a Z in common, so the GCF only is an 8, which is the GCF of the numbers. And then we're dividing each term by 8. So when I divide each term by 8, I end up with Z plus 6. So that means that the uh, factorization of this binomial is 8 times z plus 6. And if I multiply those back together, I would see I get back to the original. All right, in the next example for the coefficients, uh, we have a GCF of 3, and we have a's in common, so a is part of the GCF. And I'm dividing each of these two terms by 3a. Again, using the rules for exponents here, I'm mentally dividing, but if you feel comfortable, you can always write this out off to the side. Uh, so when I'm dividing 12a squared by 3a, I have 4a, and 45 by 3a gives me 15. Notice that the ter number of terms that I have in the parentheses equals the number of terms that I began with. In the third example, looking at the coefficients, negative 18, 10, and 6, uh, my GCF here is 2. Again, right now I'll just take out a positive GCF. You could always take out a negative as well, so that really doesn't um, make a difference. Sometimes you want to take out a negative as opposed to a positive. Uh, so we also have b's in common, and our lower exponent here on b is to the first. So the GCF is 2b, and I'm dividing every term by 2b. And that gives me negative 9b squared, and subtract the exponent, plus 5b. Again, I started with three terms. In the parentheses, I have three terms. Okay, in the fourth example, uh, looking at the coefficients, uh, my GCF is 4. 4 is the largest number that will divide those three coefficients. I have a's in common, so I'll take the lower exponent, which is a, but I do not have b's in common, so there is no b in the GCF. So dividing each term by 4a, it gives me 2a to the third plus 3a squared b to the third. I have nothing to divide the b, b to the third by, so it just stays there. And then negative 9, the a's cancel out when I divide, and I'm left with uh, negative 9b to the fourth. This last example is going to lead us into our next kind of factoring, which is factoring by grouping. I've noticed that what I have in common here is not just a monomial or just a part of a monomial, it's actually a binomial. I have 5b plus 3 in common for both terms. I'm thinking of this plus sign as separating my two terms. My GCF is 5b plus 3. And then what's left over is the 6b and the 5. So if I divided each of these terms by 5b plus 3, the numbers on the outside would be what I have left. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, next um, topic, factoring by grouping. So what we want to do here uh, is group two terms together. Usually we try to group the first two and then the second two terms together. Look for a GCF in each of those groups and then hope that we have a GCF overall. So in this first example, I'm going to group the uh, first two terms together by putting parentheses around them, and the second two terms together. I always want to leave a plus sign in between my two groups, so I'm leaving that plus sign in between. In the first group, I have a GCF of 8, so when I divide those two terms by 8, I'm left with x minus y, bring down that plus sign. In the second group, I have a GCF of b, so I bring uh, down that b and then divide each term. Notice in the parentheses, I have the exact same uh, polynomial, x minus y. That is my GCF overall. When I divide each term by x minus y, I'm left with the 8 plus b, and that's the second uh, pair of terms. You could check that this is the correct factorization. If you multiply these binomials together, you should get the original back. So that's important. You could always check your factorization for any uh, polynomial that you're factoring. In the second example, I'm grouping the first two, grouping the second two, 
notice that when I group, I do have something in common. For the first group, I do have threes in common. I have two squared in common. So factor out that three squared, which leaves me with p minus one. Remember that if you distribute back, that should give you the original. And in the second group, I have a five in common. So that's five is the PCF. And then divide each term by five, which is p minus one. Now again, it's important that what I have in these binomials is exactly the same, same term, same sign. That is my GCF, P minus 1. When I divide by C minus 1, I'm left with C squared plus 5. And once again, if we multiply those back together, we should get the original bracket. Now in this last example, I'm going to group the first two terms. I do have something in common. And now, notice that that third term is negative, so I need to group the negative, but I always want to have a plus sign in between my groups. I'm just going to squeeze a little plus sign in there, because that does not change the original polynomial. In the first group, my GCF is 2y squared. Dividing by 2y squared, I'm left with y plus 7. In the second group, I need to make both terms positive, because the two terms I have in the parentheses here are positive, so I need to uh, take out a negative GCF here. So I'm going to take out a negative 4y as the GCF as opposed to a positive 4y. So negative 4 changes the signs in the parentheses to positive y plus 7. So notice now the binomials are exactly the same with the exact same sign. That binomial y plus 7 is the GCF. And what's outside of the parentheses is the other binomial, 2y squared minus 4y. Now you might have noticed here that that uh, binomial, the second binomial, also has a GCF in it. Move this out of the way for me. But in that second binomial, I have a 2 in common and I have a y in common. So I can go ahead and factor that out. And I'm left with y minus 2. Now, I could have done that from the beginning. Maybe you noticed from the beginning that you did have a GCF overall. There was a 2 for all four terms that you could divide by. There is a y in all four terms that you could divide by. So it's usually nice to kind of look for the GCF first. Um, but if you don't, you could always factor it out at the end. But the idea here is that you always want to factor completely, which means factor all the way. So once we go through all of the different methods of factoring, you're going to see that many times you have to employ more than one method of factoring, or maybe even the same method at more than one time, so that you factor as much as you possibly can.